If you are Asian and you're really into ornamental fish, you might have an Asian arowana. I'm not sure why, but that fish is so popular in Asia. If someone told me they have a relatively big aquarium, my first guess would be that it's for keeping an arowana. However, 20 years ago, that's not exactly the case. Back then, Hualohan might be even more popular than Asian arowana. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is Hualohan? First of all, Hualohan is, of course, the Asian name. It is known worldwide as flowerhorn cichlid, or sometimes simply flowerhorn. Usually, this is the time when I would tell you the species name and the meaning behind it. However, this time, I couldn't really do that because, well, Walohan is actually not a natural species. Walohan is a hybrid, the result of breeding various cichlids. It's a hybrid between the red devil, trimac, and blood parrot cichlid. The blood parrot cichlid itself is a hybrid between Midas cichlid and Quetzal cichlid. The Quetzal cichlid is sometimes confused with Walohan, and so they are sometimes called Lohan. And that's why you might see some articles, videos, or whatever assigning Paranetroplus sinspilus as Hualohan species. Paranetroplus sinspilus is the junior synonym of Vieya melanorus, which is the scientific name of Quetzal cichlid. It was also named Cichlosoma at some point, which is why some articles also assign them as Cichlosoma. So yeah, it can be quite confusing, and it's a somewhat complicated breed to get to. You know, it's like when you are playing fish tycoon and you just breed various things to see what you get. Oh, by the way, I'm not exactly sure what Hualohan means. This is how you write the name. I tried Google translating this and it said flower R hat, which, to be honest, I don't get why it's called that. Maybe this is not the intended translation, so if you speak the language or you understand the etymology, do let us know in the comment. Anyway. This is also the time when I usually will talk about their distribution. But of course, because they are not a natural species, they don't have a natural distribution. They exist in fish tanks. Well, most of the time at least. Some of them actually exist in the wild. I'll talk about it later. First, let's talk about their morphology as always. Since Wallohan is a cichlid, it shares the same general body form as the other cichlid, which doesn't really say much to be fair because there are more than 1,000 species of cichlid. For example, tilapia is also a cichlid. But anyway, the actual diagnostic character of cichlids that separates them from other similar fishes is the fusion of their lower pharyngeal bones into pharyngeal jaw. They can use this pharyngeal jaw to process food. It serves as a second jaw, basically. Anyway, let's talk about their general look. The most prominent trait is probably the nuchal hump, also known as the cock. Nuchal humps are the characteristics of African and South American cichlids, which is why nuchal hump is not exactly unique to the wallow humps. However, the nuchal humps of natural species are often small, definitely smaller compared to wallow hunts nuchal hump at least. That's because wallow hunts are purposely bred to have big nuchal hump. That's one of its selling points. This nuchal hump is bigger in males, which is why the general consensus is to classify them as sexual trait. Their females prefer males with bigger nuchal hump after all, and apparently humans do too. Moving on, another noticeable trait is these black marks along their sides. Actually, let me tell you a little story. So, when I was little, people told me these are Chinese characters. They told me each individual Hualohan actually have Chinese word on them, and that's what makes them unique and cool. And so, because I was more or less uneducated back then, I believed that, and I thought that was really cool. But no, these are not Chinese words. These are just, well, black markings. In fact, these are not unique to the Hualohan either. They got this straight from the Trimax cichlids. Wolohan also have red patches on their body. Males typically have more reddish coloration. Different breeds also have different degree of red coloration. Some have whitish pupil, but some of them have reddish pupil. Actually, the one with popping reddish pupil might be more popular if I think about it. Next, 
Let's talk about the breeding aspect of this fish, but before that, Even though Hualohan is basically a Chinese name, their origin is not China. It's actually a Southeast Asian classic. I cannot find a scientific research article talking about this, but most, if not all articles that I've read on the internet stated they originated from Malaysia. Like I said earlier, they were, quote-unquote, created from breeding trimax cichlid, red devil, and blood parrot cichlid. In fact, Walohan is technically the first generation of this fish. Walohan were then further bred into multiple other breeds. These are all collectively called flower horn cichlid in the West. Walohan is very popular throughout Southeast Asia and East Asia back in early 2000s. It was also brought to the West, and while I don't think they garnered as much fan in the West compared to the East, but Walohan do have its own fans there. Demand increased, and so. Breeding boom, especially in Southeast Asia. Various new breeders arose in Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, and even Taiwan. New breeds of flowerhorn cichlids appeared in the market. That made the market more competitive. Better and better quality are demanded, which is why some breeders with less resources couldn't cap up. I've heard there are cases where fishes are tattooed, which, if you didn't know, yes. That is being done to some ornamental fishes and that definitely causes controversies. But I'm not exactly sure whether some Wallohan are tattooed or not. Anyway, many breeders gave up, while the one with the best quality fishes thrive. However, better quality also means higher price. Wallohan become an expensive fancy fish in Southeast Asia. And so, not everyone could afford them, even if they wanted to. Not only that, the hype diminished over time. But still, many Hualohan were bred in the hype phase. If those didn't get sold, those needed to go somewhere, right? Well, that's the start of the controversy. Okay, but seriously though, let's answer the question. Where did the unsold fishes go? To the nearby lakes and rivers, of course. Yep, classic. Hualohan became an invasive fish in some Southeast Asian countries especially Malaysia and Indonesia. This is actually not that shocking, because a lot of cichlids have been known to be invasive in some regions. For example, the red devil cichlid had been a menace in various lakes in Indonesia. Fun fact, around Sermo Reservoir in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, red devil invasion is so bad that it had become the most abundant fish there. And so, locals made chips out of them. In fact, several years ago, when I visited the place, me and my colleagues bought a pack and ate some. Anyway, since flowerhorn cichlid is biologically quite similar to the red devil, such case could also happen. Depends on where the invasion is and how susceptible the local biota is. I've heard flowerhorn cichlid have been prohibited or at least heavily regulated by the Malaysian Department of Fisheries. I think you do need to have a written approval to own them, or maybe that's just for selling them. I'm not exactly sure, so if Malaysians are watching this video, do let us know. Apparently, flower horns are also banned in Australia. Meanwhile, in Indonesia, it's quite easy to get a flower horn because you could easily buy them online. You don't even need to personally know any breeder. There are also contests here and there. I've heard that's also the case in the USA. Well, to be fair, you could even watch some US content creators showing their flower horns on YouTube right now. I didn't find any articles stating flower horns had become invasive in the US, so I hope hobbies keep being responsible with their pets so it doesn't happen. Same goes with every pet owner in the world, whatever pet you might be keeping. And yeah, that's all for now. Oh, by the way, if you think they are cool and you want to get them, I wouldn't suggest doing so. If you really, really want to, then do make sure you read everything about how to keep them and prepare everything prior. Anyway, enjoy your day.